This is going to be a good one, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really excited. If you watch my channel, you know I reviewed the HP Spectre X360 with a gem cut design, late 2018. One of my favorite ultra portables, one of my favorite convertible laptops. But I had my eye on its bigger brother. I wanted to check out the HP Spectre X360 15 inch model, the 15T, and with its all new Coffee Lake processor and its dedicated GPU, the NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti with Max-Q design. I was looking forward to this one, and especially with that 4K display, I absolutely love it. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my unboxing and first look at the HP Spectre X360 15T, all new for early 2019, coming up. Want to see more videos like this? Well, why not hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification icon. This way you'll be alerted every time I post a new video. And don't forget to check me out on my social media, especially Twitter, because that's where I post all the latest updates. Now, pricing is very competitive as it starts at $15.99. You can get that at Best Buy. That one will come with the Whiskey Lake processor with the MX150 GPU, and that also has a 4K display. That's not bad for $15.99. Pretty good specs with that gorgeous display, that's for sure. Now, before we get to the unboxing, here's a quick rundown of the specs. My review unit has a 15.6 inch 4K UHD display. It's absolutely gorgeous. We'll go over that in a little bit. It's powered by the Intel Core i7-8750H, aka the Coffee Lake processor with the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 Ti with Max-Q design. It has four gigabytes of video memory. You can get it with either eight or 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and you can get it with up to two terabytes of PCIe NVMe SSD storage. It also has an 84 watt hour battery, and it comes in at 4.81 pounds or 2.18 kilograms. Now that's enough with the specs. Let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. And just like the 13 inch model we took a look at, this comes with a full leather sleeve, great for carrying the unit around. That's a nice touch. Now packaging is very premium as we've come to expect with the Spectre line. This is no exception. Holding unit for the first time feels premium. We'll get to that in a little bit. You get some setup instructions, which I'm sure most of you won't even need, as well as warranty information. You get your power charger, it's 135 watts. It also uses a barrel pin connector. It's pretty sleek and nice looking for a pretty robust charger. You get your power cord and of course the HP pen. Now we've seen this pen before. It has the Entrig pen technology, 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity, some extra pen tips, and it runs off one quadruple A battery. Holding the unit for the first time, this feels very high-end, very premium, as we've come to expect with the Spectre line. I love the Poseidon blue with the pale brass accents. To me, sleek looking and very classy at the same time. You could also, of course, get it with the dark ash silver with those copper lux accents. On the left side is your power port as well as an HDMI port, so you can connect this unit to either a TV or a monitor. And since this is a gem cut design, the power button is placed in the corner, out of the way so you won't accidentally hit it. That's pretty good. And let's not forget the 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Now moving over to the right side, a micro SD card slot for storage expansion, a privacy switch to turn off the camera, that's pretty good, USB 3.1 Type A, and two Thunderbolt 3 ports that support four lanes. So if you want to connect to multiple 4K monitors or to an external GPU, you have that option. But without a doubt, the star of this show is its gorgeous 15.6 inch 4K IPS display. It's a multi-touch display, glossy display, and it's absolutely gorgeous. It has a resolution of 3840 by 2160. And that means it also has a 16 by nine aspect ratio. And they also managed to slim down the bezels about 12% less on the sides. And that's pretty good over last year's model. Now, something to keep in mind, this is a very glossy display. So there will be a lot of reflections in direct sunlight. So keep that in mind. But my overall impressions, first 24 hours in, this is an excellent 4K panel. 
The blacks are really deep, the colors are really vibrant and pop off the display. Those are the hallmarks of an excellent 4K panel and it also gets very bright. I look forward to testing it out, giving you the numbers and benchmarks in my full review. But suffice it to say, this is a stunning panel in my opinion that looks absolutely gorgeous. Now you can also get this with a full HD panel with an optional shore view display. So that's something you might want to consider when checking out. But me personally, I love this 4K panel. That's the one I would go with. And coming very soon, there's going to be an OLED option. So that's going to be something really interesting. I'm a big fan of OLED displays, especially on laptops. So I can't wait to test that one out as well. But right now, that's not an option that is coming very soon. Now, of course, this is a touch panel with pen support, so you can use it with the HP Pen, which is included at no additional cost. It's the Entrig Pen technology, so that's the same as a Surface Pen for those wondering, and it actually worked pretty well. Now, you can see there are two buttons on it, and it was good for sketching out artwork or taking some notes in a meeting. Definitely can work in that regard. Now, you can opt to get the more expensive HP Tilt Pen, but that gives you additional functionality, including an eraser on the top. So if you want that tilt functionality as well as the eraser, this might be the way to go. A little bit more like the Surface Pen, in my opinion, but again, more expensive. Now, one thing to keep in mind, it can get a little bit heavy when you're in tablet mode. So if you're using the pen with it, you might want to put it on a table because it does get kind of heavy. After all, it weighs 4.81 pounds or 2.18 kilograms. Now, this being a convertible laptop, you can put it into the different modes. Here it is in tent mode, great for consuming media such as Netflix, YouTube, great for recipes in the kitchen, as is the stand mode, which is also great for consuming media as well. And you could also put it into the tablet mode. This is great for use with the pen or to do some web surfing on the sofa. But for me, the best mode, the mode I use the most is, of course, laptop mode. This being a 15.6 inch device, it's not the lightest in the world. So this is the most comfortable, most convenient way to use this convertible. Now, one thing I did notice, it does have some very sturdy metal hinges, so you won't get too much screen wobble. Although this is a convertible laptop, so you will notice a little bit of screen wobble when you're in laptop mode, say you're using the pen or your finger. Okay, so let's talk about the keyboard, and so far I'm really liking it. It has 1.5 millimeters of key travel, so it's really comfortable to type on for extended periods of time. It also has a multi-stage backlight on it, so if you want to work in a dark room or a dimly lit environment, you can. Now, this being a 15.6 inch convertible laptop, they did have room for a numeric keypad. So the number pad here will be great for those accountants out there. And for those who like to crunch numbers, say with Excel spreadsheets, they'll really appreciate this. Now it does move the keyboard over to the left a bit. So that takes a little bit of an adjustment, but not much. I was used to it after a few hours actually. And just like the 13 inch model I reviewed, this employs the synaptic drivers when it comes to the touchpad. And they worked okay as far as two finger scrolling, Windows 10 gestures, everything works as advertised. I'm just a bigger fan of the precision drivers, which I feel are just a little bit more precise, a little bit more responsive. But having said that, so far I'm impressed with what synaptics have done as far as this touchpad is concerned. It's actually working pretty well. Okay, so I've had this unit for a little bit more than 24 hours, and I can tell you performance with the Coffee Lake processor is very good. Now, again, this is a six core processor with 16 gigabytes of RAM. It's DDR4, so that's good. And it also has the NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti with Max-Q design, four gigabytes of video memory. So if you wanna edit 4K video on this, you can. If you wanna play some AAA titles, you can. I'm gonna do a lot more in my full review as far as gaming, as far as video editing, and giving you all the benchmarks but so far i'm impressed with performance now they also give you the hp command center which allows you to choose from cool or to performance mode and speaking of cooling i'm curious to see how the thermals will hold up in my full testing as they've employed some interesting cooling techniques my review unit has one terabyte of nvme pcie ssd storage and as you can see from these reads and writes it's pretty impressive pretty good speeds as far as the ssd is concerned now these are bang and olufsen quad speakers meaning there's four with discrete amplifier and a bigger speaker box as according to hp they sound pretty good let's give it a listen I'm 
So far, I'm really impressed. I like its gorgeous, bright, sharp, vivid display. It's really good. 4K, of course. Sleek and functional gem cut design. I'm really a big fan of that. Outstanding build and quality as well. Really good audio to those Bang & Olufsen quad speakers. I love the fact the pen is included. And I like the performance so far out of that Coffee Lake processor and that GTX 1050 Ti with Max-Q design. No real deal breakers here so far, ladies and gentlemen, but of course, I've only had this a little bit more than 24 hours. I will be putting it through its paces for my full review, so stay tuned. That will be coming very soon. I want to test the thermals, battery life, see how gaming is on this, see how video editing on this, particularly 4K, and I want to see overall how this runs as my daily driver for the next couple of weeks. And I will bring you that full review, so stay tuned. That will be coming very soon. So what do you think about the all new HP Spectre X360 15T? I actually really like it. I think it really looks good as far as that gem cut design. I like its functionality, keeping the power button out of the way so you don't accidentally hit it. I like the way it looks as well. Love the Poseidon blue with the pale gold accents. Looks really nice in my opinion. Now, as far as performance, that Coffee Lake processor is looking good so far. I really like the fact that it has that dedicated GPU. This is not the MX150. This actually has the GTX 1050 Ti with Max-Q design, four gigabytes of video memory, and so far my benchmarks are looking good. Of course, I will be putting it through its paces for the next couple of weeks to bring you that full review, to give you the benchmarks and the final numbers, so stay tuned for that. As far as the display, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's a 4K IPS multi-touch display. It looks gorgeous. Now there is going to be an OLED option. I can't wait to get my hands on it. As you know, I'm a big fan of OLED displays. This one will be gorgeous. I did get a peek at it at CS 2019 earlier in January. It looked gorgeous. I can't wait to get some more extensive time with it coming very soon. So that option will be available hopefully end of April or somewhere around that time. But so far, so good. Everything's looking good. I like its price coming in at around $1,500, but I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. I will be bringing that full review to you very soon, so stay tuned for that. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, and of course my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.